dear student, this is your teacher Maida Bukhari and I am connected to you through BSU where learning is uninterrupted. I am really glad to see your response on the lessons which your teachers are sharing on BSU and uh, you are every day turning in the assignments and uh, remember that these lessons are specifically recorded which are catering the targets which you need to learn in this grade and the response which we have been receiving that is really overwhelming and um, more and more students are turning in the assignments every day so this is really a success for our school and for you especially because you are not it is making sure that you are not wasting your time being at home and uh, uh, consuming the time productively. I would like to share some of the responses with you. In this lesson we discuss the factors which cause friction. These factors help us to do many activities in everyday life. We also discuss that how friction produces heat and did few experiments to observe this. In response to previous lesson we received an impressive feedback from students. I would like to share a few with you. produces friction and friction produces heat. So the second question is, what happens when you rub your eraser on your table? What happens to its condition? And when I rub eraser on the table continuously, it changes shape and it got I Rub the coin in the towel till I don't know how much. Then I put it on my arm. I feel warm because the towel and the and the towel and the coin produce heat. And there on eraser, if we will continue rubbing it on the table, so the eraser will not remain in its real condition. It will get small. I thirty three and four. These are my school shoes. These. Soles are not as same as when I bought them. They are rubbed. These three patterns help the shoes to grip on the ground and they worn out when we use them too much because of friction. In today's lesson, we will explore few factors which help reduce friction. I will give you an example of carom board. If the surface of carom board is rough, we sprinkle powder on it. The powder particles reduce friction and let the striker and coins move from one end to another using less force. Oiling is another way to reduce friction, so if any door in your house produces creaky sound when opens, know that putting few drops of oil into its hinges will make the door's movement sound. The same method is used for reducing friction in machines and equipment. Oiling and lubrication makes surfaces smoother. It reduces heat caused by friction in moving parts. Lubrication adds more life to machines. Lubrication also increases the speed of performance. The next useful method to reduce friction is the use of wheels. Dragging a load on wheels is far easier than dragging on the ground. Instead of simply sliding over the ground, wheels rotate. Now, with the help of wheels, you don't need to drag or slide things. Wheels in your school bags, in your bicycle or car help these objects move, applying less force. Think. If one of your bicycle wheels break down in the middle of your biking journey, you will have to drag the bicycle all the way to home. 
you will be tired because you are now dragging the bicycle and applying more force to make it move. Dragging load on wheels is far easier than dragging on the ground.